Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and uh, hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're looking at God will fight for you in Exodus chapter 14. I'm in an internet cafe, so it's a bit noisy, so forgive me. And uh, I hope it's a blessing to you uh, what I'm about to share today. So let's come before the Lord and ask his blessing uh, upon his word today. So we're looking at the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 14, the book of Exodus chapter 14. Let's come before the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and blessings. And Father, we give you the prayers of the glory today. And we pray, Lord, that you bless your word today. May your word be blessed in all our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. And so reading it, the word of God. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before the Firoth, uh, Fiheroth, between Migdol and the sea over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall they camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land of the wilderness that shut them up in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, and the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, overtook them encamping by the sea beside the uh, Pi Harioth before uh, Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from out of Egypt? Is not this the word that did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show unto you today. For the Egyptians, if you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherein Christ thou unto me? Speak thou to the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor and Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed, and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, and stood behind them, and he came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind all the night, and made the sea dry and land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were uh, unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians uh, pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. It came to pass that in the morning, which the Lord looped unto the host of the Egyptians, through the pillar of fire and the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, 
and the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength, when the morning appeared, and the Egyptian fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea and after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a war unto them, on the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw that the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So I want to ask the question, are you wanting something to happen in your life, but it seems impossible? A change of job, a change in relationship, a change in, in the terms that you may be wanting to get married, um, a change in your circumstances, whatever it is, you find that it's impossible. I want to say to you today that God will fight for you, that God is with you, so don't be afraid. If you turn to Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 5, Isaiah 43, Isaiah chapter 43. And as I have 43 verse 1 to 5 But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by name, thou art mine When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee When thou walkest through the fire, they shall not be burned Neither shall the, the flame kindle upon thee For I am the Lord thy God The Holy One of Israel, the Saviour And I have Egypt for ransom and Ethiopia a seba for thee, since thou was precious in my sight, thou was being honourable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Fear not, my friend, God is with you today. Whatever you need today, God will be with you. If you turn to Romans 8.28, Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 Romans 8.28 my friend Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God To them who were called according to his purpose For whom he foreknew he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son That he might be the firstborn among many brethren God knows you, he knows your needs today And he will meet your needs my friend so God will fight for you when you make God your priority. When you make God your priority. Turn to Psalm 18, verse 1. Is God your priority today? You've got battles, you've got difficulties, you've got issues, but is God your priority? Verse Psalm 18, verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. He wants to put God first, you see. And then God will bless him. And then he says in verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Why? Because God is his strength. God is his strength. Uh, Nikki Cruz, uh, at 10 years of age, wanted to commit suicide. And uh, his mother told him she didn't love him. He, as he was trying to hang himself, his brother stopped him from hanging himself and at 10 years of age he went off and he left uh, home and he went to New York. He became a leader in the gangs of New York and uh, became a very violent man. Uh, anyway, in a little village in, in the outbacks of America, a preacher called David Wilkerson was told by God to go and preach to the gangs of New York. He goes to, the, to New York, he goes into the police station, the police say, we're not going with you. Uh, you need God because we ain't coming with you. So he goes into New York City where the gangs were. He opens a great big hall. Over a thousand gang members go in and he preaches the simple message of the cross. And as he preached that simple message, many, many gang members came down to the front and gave their hearts to the Lord. And one of them was Nicky Cruz. And he gave his heart to Jesus. He put his guns and his knife away and he became a savior, a servant of the Lord. And I want to say today that you need to know the Jesus, and as you know Jesus, he will fight for you. If you turn to Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Matthew, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, 
He said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, I care not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You think you're righteous? You need to repent, because we're not righteous. We're all sinners today. Romans chapter, and we've got to turn away from the old life and turn to the new life in Christ. Romans 3.21, put away your guns, put away your knives, put away the violence, put it all away. Put the drugs away, put the immorality away, put it away and turn to Christ. Romans 3.21. Romans 3.21 Romans 3.21 But now is the righteousness of God without the law is manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto one upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed with the forbearance of God. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by the law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. What Paul is saying is that you and I are guilty before God. We're all guilty. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so therefore all of us are coming under judgment and we can't avoid this judgment. And if God gives us what we deserve, we go to hell. But here's the point. Christ came down from heaven as the Son of God. And he came and he died in your place. He, he, he had that crown of thorns on his head for you. He was nailed to the cross for you. He was broken for you. He died in your place for you. And if you believe in him, that is the righteousness of God. Not your own righteousness, but his righteousness covers you. And you're forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith. Declared right before God. And justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can have peace with God through Jesus. And only through Jesus. When Christ calls a man he bids him come and die. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We've got to turn to God. We've got to trust in Him. We've got to walk with Him. And we fail Him, but we've got to walk with Him. And until we put Him first, He will not fight for us. We've got to put Him first. In, in Rwanda, there was a Rwandan revival where God worked. And the Hutis and Tutis were killing each other. And the pastor thought to himself, if we've got a revival, how come Christians are killing each other? And he has a point. And the reason is because that revival was shallow. It did not go deep into the heart of people to change them and i want to say to you has god gone deep into you and changed your life is it radically different one writer says discipleship is more than getting to know what the teacher knows it is getting to be what he is john chapter 15 verse 1 to 8 john chapter 15 so god will fight for you if you walk with him in the right way john 15 1 to 8 you're being beaten today by your circumstances because you're not walking with God. John 15, 1 to 8. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that it may bring more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me. And I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And man gathereth them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Herein is the Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so that you shall may be disciples. So we've got to be bearing fruit, we've got to be bearing fruit of the spirit love joy peace we've got to be walking in the way of god and yes we can backslide yes we can fail but we confess we ask for forgiveness and we move on we go forward but if we're not putting god first then he will not fight for us god will fight for you because he can be trusted psalm 18 Psalm 18. And so the people of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, they are basically 
being challenged by the Pharaoh's army are coming after them and now the Jewish people are coming up to the Dead Sea, they can't get across it and they're stuck and they're going to get killed or it seems to be by Pharaoh but God moved the sea, allowed them to go through, cut down the chariots with the water and kill them and save the people, his people. God can be trusted. Psalm 18 verse 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God. My strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high time. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. God will save you from your enemies, my friend. Um, who can you trust these days? Can you trust politicians? Can you trust people are fickle? They don't keep their promises. God will back you up. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Oh, I love thee, O Lord, because he hath heard my voice and my supplication, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. The sorrow of death compassed me. The pain of hell got hold upon me. I find trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, and I beseeched and delivered my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Uh, God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. And God will help you, my friend. You turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather unto barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They tell not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory shall not array like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, or ye of little faith? Wherefore take no thought, saying, What you shall eat, what you shall drink, or what you shall be clothed. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you need of all these things. And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And God will back you up. God will back you up. People will let you down, but God will back you up. God can be trusted. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. I love this verse. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Yeah. I'm hungry too. Well, come on. Sorry. Genesis, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass that it is this day to save much people alive. Joseph had jealousy come in the family. They they were jealous of his coat of many colours. They threw him into a terrible time where they sold him to slavery and then he, he went off into a terrible life where he he worked for part of his house and was accused of adultery when he hadn't committed adultery. Goes to prison, spends time there, yet God rescued him. And now he says God meant it for good. God will back you up. No matter what people do, no matter how people treat you, God will be there for you and he will back you up, my friend. Psalm 18. God will fight for you. God will fight for you when you face, even when you face the impossible. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Verse 11 to 19. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him, with dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 
Then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent forth the above and he took me as he drew me out of many waters and he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also in a large place and delivered me because he delighted in me. And in the Bible, it often talks about nature and, and God controlling nature, the winds and, and, and the waters and, and everything. And it shows the power of God, it shows the greatness of God. We turn to Psalm 114, 144, Psalm 144, Psalm 144, we read, Blessed is be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, and high tower, and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like unto vanity, his days are as shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, touch the mountains that they shall smoke. Notice the, the nature that God is in control. Send thy hand from above with me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children whom man speak vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psalter in an instrument of ten strings, will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouths speak of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown upon their youth, that our daughters may be a cornerstone polished after the multisimilitude of a palace, that our gardeners may be full of fording, uh, that our gardeners may be full of fording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and tens of thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labour, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case, be happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Psalm 4 verse 1. Hear me when I call, O God, and my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Psalm 31 verse 8. Psalm 31 verse 8. So God is over nature and he can do all things with nature. And if he can do that with nature, he can move in your situation. Psalm 31 verse 8. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. So God can be trusted even in the impossible. So don't panic. Don't be in despair. God will meet your need. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. God will meet your need. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, 1 to 13. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with the disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take it a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter, a brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, let nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. So here the Lord 
meets the need of 5,000 people with a few loaves and fishes. And if God can do that, what can he do with you? If you just give him the little resources that you have, God will find for you. And you can read John chapter 6, verse 26 and 27, that he'll meet your spiritual need. In John chapter 6, verse 29 and 32, 33 and 35, Christ will meet your spiritual need. Christ can change your old habits and put new life into you. He can change your marriage, put a new life into it. He can put new life in your ministry, in your work, in your family. God will fight for you and he can be trusted. Even in impossible situations. Okay? When you... God will fight for you but we need to realize that holiness is important if we're going to be victorious. Psalm 8 verse 21. Psalm 8 verse 21. I think Psalm 18 verse 21, I think. Psalm 18 and 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. So Psalm 18, verse 21, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. So we'll be victorious if we're obedient to God. You know, uh, in the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, the witch says, Mirror, Mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? She was worried about her own pride, wanting to look better than Snow White. And we can have sin of jealousy and pride in our hearts that are not of God. And God looks at the heart and wants to see whether we're real with him and obedient. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. How is your heart today? 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on the continents or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God looks at your heart. What's your heart like today? Is it sincere before him? Obedience, 1 Samuel 15, 22. 1 Samuel 15, 22. We read these words. And Samuel said, Had the Lord has a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice to hearken than the fat of rams. Here, the situation is that Saul would set up a monument to bring him glory and he, he was not following what God wanted to do. But he was doing all the right things on the outward but and the inward his, he was not right with God. And so we can be doing all the right things outwardly but inwardly we're not right with God. To obey is better than sacrifice. George Muller said this, there was a day when I died to George Muller his opinions and preferences, tastes and will. Die to the world, its approval or sanction. Die to the approval or blame even of brothers or friends. And since then I have striven only to show myself approved and to God. Are we being obedient to God? And if we are, then God will fight for us, period. God will fight for you. Your enemies are no problem. The enemies of God with Pharaoh's chariots and army coming to get them in war in, in Exodus chapter 14. They had no chance, yet God destroyed Pharaoh's army with the war to come down. Psalm 18 verse 14, let's look at that. Psalm 18 verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. So your enemies, no matter how big, are not big, bigger than God. You know, there are some enemies that will continually chase you, like a lion can chase a wildebeest, and it just keeps chasing it and chasing it until it gets it. I remember seeing a documentary of an elephant and a pack of lions. And you, have you got enemies that are like that, that they just keep pursuing you relentless and never, ever seem to be giving up, never seem to give up on you? God will fight for you, my friend. 
1 Samuel 17 1 Samuel 17 1 Samuel 17 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 Thus says David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with sword and with spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of the host, the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the horse of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the earth, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And God gave Goliath into the hands of David, as you know. Your enemies are nothing to God. So, how many enemies have you got? How much is, are they pulling you down? How much are they dragging you down? They are nothing to God. Give your enemies to God. And say, God, I have these enemies, help me. Help me, and he will help you. So we come to the end, my friend. Are you facing impossible odds today? Are you facing an impossible situation where you just feel you can't make it? You just feel that you haven't got the strength anymore to go forward? Are your dreams broken? All the dreams that you had, are they broken? Are they smashed to the ground? I want to say today that you have a great God. God gave victory to Moses and the people of Israel at the Dead Sea by destroying the Egyptian army as the waters came on. And God will meet your need and fight for you and defend you. And your broken dreams will be new dreams. Your impossible situation will become possible. God. Pastor, today you have labored in the church for many, many years. And there has been a split in the church, and all the work that you seem to have done for years has now seemed in ruins, and it seems as if it's all over for you. I want to say that God is the God of the impossible, and it's only just beginning for you, my friend might be you are living in a situation where your marriage is so dead that you are crying even this moment because you feel that your marriage will never ever move forward i want to say to you that in the impossible god will fight for you and make it possible maybe you have dreams of relationship and that relationship has not been what you thought it would be i want to say that god will make the impossible possible and God will fight for you. You might feel battled and beleaguered today and feel that you have no future and no hope because the odds stacked against you are so big. I want to say to you that you have a God who will fight for you. He will provide for you. He will support you. He will give you rest. He will open the way for you. He will fight for you. You might have a reputation that is no reputation anymore. It's broken in the dust. I want to tell you that God is the maker and the breaker of reputation. And God is over those who make your reputation to be nothing. And he will fight for your reputation. Just leave it with him. A broken dream in Hannah, crying for a daughter, crying for a son, crying for a child. And God, in that brokenness, gave her her desire. And this is what she said in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 and 10. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. The Lord is God of, not, of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumble are girded with strength. And it goes on and on about how God gave her victory when she had no hope. 
Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 and 7. Rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice, let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, pray and God will meet your need. You will meet your need. You will meet your need. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Again, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? That is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We come to the end, my friend. God will fight for you today. You might be battered and beleaguered. You might be discouraged. But maybe you just need to sit back and let God fight for you and see the hand of the Lord upon your life. Do what you have to do. But wait on him and see what he does for you. Okay, let's come before the Lord. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we adore you today. Father, we acknowledge our failure and sin. We acknowledge our weakness. We acknowledge, Lord, not being what we should be. We acknowledge worrying. We acknowledge striving. And Father, we come to you today and we confess every failure and sin. We confess every need of you today. And Father, we need you. We need your strength. We need your grace. We need your love. And we need your care. We need you, Lord. And I pray for each person here today who's heard your word, that you would bless them, that you would comfort them, that you would encourage them. That, Father, the impossible situation that they're facing right now would become possible. That even now they would see a change in their circumstances. That every need that they have, you would meet, Lord. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I've just preached here, I've preached on Lola Preachers, if you go onto that YouTube channel you'll see another message there called The Power of the Holy Spirit. Then if you type in Jason Burns there's another channel uh, where I did a Bible study on Ruth, uh, studying the book of Ruth. And uh, if you go on to Samuel's Women Theological Seminary uh, YouTube channel there's lots of videos of me there as well. Uh, Piccadilly Gardens Community Church there's some videos there of me as well. Uh, there are a couple of thousand videos of me uh, where I'm preaching, teaching, lecturing, little studies here and there on various topics that are really good and helpful. There's a few thousand or at least a thousand videos uh, that I did on atheism that's not so edifying. I did a lot of it in the flesh uh, at about time in my life. So please forgive me for those. Um, they're collected by atheists and they put them on to try and make my reputation look bad. But uh, this is me, this is the real Jason, the Bible teacher and uh, proper apologist. I do have a degree in theology, so that Master's Level on and been on a leadership team recently. And um, been a pastor of, uh, and served many churches over the years. And so um, an evangelical, faithful servant of the Word of God. So we just thank the Lord uh, for his goodness and uh, don't be discouraged, keep keep in the word uh, and let God speak to you, let God minister to you uh, and, and God will guide you and God will be with you, so look to him, alright, take care and God bless.